Hey there, it's Schematic Med, and today we're going to talk about myocardial and pacemaker cell action potential. As always, you can find pain minutes under the video with main specific title that's most relevant for you, or just watch video all the way through. Before we start, let's repeat some important terminology. Depolarization is when the membrane potential becomes less negative, or in other words, more positive, and is caused when positively charged sodium ions suddenly rush through open voltage-gated sodium channels into a cell. Repolarization refers to the change in membrane potential that returns it to a negative value just after the depolarization and is caused by the slow closing of sodium channels and the opening of voltage-gated potassium channels. Cardiomyocytes are the cells responsible for generating contractile force in the heart. Pacemaker cells are specialized cardiomyocytes within the sinoatrial node that spontaneously fire to trigger each heartbeat or otherwise said trigger not specialized cardiomyocytes to contract. Myocardial action potential. Phase 0. Rapid upstroke and depolarization. This phase consists of a rapid positive change in voltage across the cell membrane. Let's imagine that the lens in the diagram is the cell membrane and ions move in and out. In non-pacemaker cells, depolarization is produced predominantly by the activation of sodium channels, which increases the membrane conductance of sodium. These channels are activated when an action potential arrives from a neighboring cell through gap junctions. When this happens, the voltage within the cell increases slightly. If this increased voltage reaches a certain value, which we call threshold potential, which is approximately negative 70 millivolts, it causes the sodium channels to open. This produces a large influx of sodium into the cell, rapidly increasing the voltage further. Phase 1 – Initial Repolarization This phase begins with the rapid inactivation of the sodium channels, reducing the movement of sodium into the cell. At the same time, potassium channels open and close rapidly allowing for a brief flow of potassium ions out of the cell, making the membrane potential slightly more negative. This is referred to as a notch on the action potential waveform. Phase 2 – The Plateau Phase This phase is known as the plateau phase due to the membrane potential remaining almost constant. As the membrane slowly begins to repolarize, this is due to the balance of charge moving into and out of the cell. During this phase, the late rectifier potassium channels allow potassium to leave the cell, while L-type calcium channels allow the movement of calcium ions into the cell. These calcium ions bind to and open more calcium channels called ryanodine receptors located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum within the cell, allowing the flow of calcium out of it. Phase 3 during phase 3, the rapid repolarization phase of the action potential, the L-type calcium channels close, while the slow delayed rectifier potassium channels remain open. This outward positive current causes the cell to repolarize. The delayed rectifier potassium channels close when the membrane potential is restored to about negative 85 to negative 90 millivolts. The delayed rectifier channels close when the membrane potential is restored to resting potential, whereas the inward rectifier channels and the ion pumps remain active throughout phase 4, resetting the resting ion concentration. Phase 4 In the ventricular myocytes, phase 4 occurs when the cell is at rest, in a period of diastole. In the standard non-pacemaker cells, the voltage during this phase is more or less constant, at roughly negative 85 millivolts. Oh, by the way, this is Ben. He is so proud to be a cell that he tells everyone he meets about it. He is here to show us that the resting membrane potential results from the flux of ions having flowed into the cell, for example sodium and calcium, and flux of ions having flowed out of the cell, for example potassium chloride and bicarbonate. During this phase, the membrane is most permeable to potassium, which can travel into or out of the cell through leak channels. 
pacemaker cells action potential. In pacemaker cells, for example sinoatrial node cells, the increase in membrane voltage is mainly due to activation of L-type calcium channels. The L-type calcium channels are activated more slowly than the sodium channels, therefore the depolarization slope in the pacemaker action potential waveform is less steep than in the non-pacemaker action potential waveform. Next, there is no obvious phase 1 and plateau phase present in pacemaker action potentials. And in the sinoatrial node, phase 3 is also due to the closure of the L-type calcium channels, preventing inward flux of calcium and the opening of the potassium channels and potassium efflux. During phase 4, the membrane potential slowly becomes more positive until it reaches the threshold potential. The pacemaker potential is thought to be due to a group of channels referred to as HCN channels, hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated channels. These channels open at very negative voltages, for example immediately after phase 3 of the previous action potential, and allow the passage of both potassium and sodium into the cell. Due to their unusual property of being activated by very negative membrane potentials, the movement of ions through these channels is referred to as the funny current. In contrast to skeletal muscle, as already we said, the cardiac action potential is not initiated by nerve activity. Instead, it arises from a group of specialized cells that have automatic action potential generation capability. Cardiac muscle action potential has a plateau due to calcium influx and potassium efflux. Cardiac muscle contraction requires calcium influx from extracellular fluid to induce calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum, calcium induced calcium release, and triggers myocytes contraction, which we call excitation contraction coupling. All cardiac muscle cells are electrically linked to one another by structures known as gap junctions, which allow the action potential to pass from one cell to the next. This helps all cardiomyocytes to contract together. In contrast to cardiomyocytes, there is no phase 1 and plateau phase or phase 2 in pacemaker action potential. In pacemaker cells, the increase in membrane voltage is mainly due to activation of L-type calcium channels, not voltage-gated sodium channels. In phase 4, the pacemaker potential is due to a group of channels that we call funny current or EF channels.